Hi, I'm Victoria Ortiz, the Community Engagement Manager at the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency. Spring has arrived here in Tahoe, and the 2020 Bike Challenge is right around the corner. It'll be taking place the whole month of June, and we want to get your bikes ready to ride. Make sure that you reg register online at lovetoride.net slash Tahoe. The Bike Challenge is a fun way to win prizes and ride your bike while helping to protect the environment. But first, you need to make sure that your bike is ready to ride, which is why TRPA and the Lake Tahoe Bike Coalition have pulled together this helpful video. So, when it's time to get your bike out of storage, obvious issues like flat tires and broken seats and bent rims might require a little bit more repair, but general maintenance should only take a few minutes. Let's get started. So the first step is washing your bike. You could do it with it standing up like this, but sometimes it's hard because it'll fall over. So I like to just flip it upside down and balance it on the handlebars and the seat. Once you've got that set up, grab a bucket with some water and a rag and just go through and get all that grime and dirt off your bike. So once you've finished cleaning off your bike, then we're going to move on to the ABCs of biking. A stands for air or air pressure in your tires. So if you have an air pump, you can fill it up yourself, or if you don't, you can go to a local bike shop and many of them will let you borrow a bike pump for free to fill up your tires. So usually somewhere along the rim of the bike tire, there'll be a little bit of riding and this will tell you exactly how much pressure should be in the bike. So in my case, I'm looking at the PSI, the 23 to 50. So I know that I want my bike tire between that range. Bike tires come with two different types of valves. One is called a Presta, and that's this thin long one, and another kind is the straighter. And oftentimes bike pumps will come with the attachment for both. So I'm gonna attach mine to the Presta one here. Make sure it's all the way in, lift it up, and oftentimes I'll put it down all the way. So oftentimes bikes lose pressure when they just sit there for a while. So for instance, my tires can go up to 50 PSI. So I would just look at the bottom and go all the way up to 50. Once I'm done, I just clip this down, take it off, tighten this little bit back on. So once you've filled up both two tires with air, you're going to want to check for B on the ABC's brakes. So your left brake controls the front and the right brake controls the back. So to check, I'm just gonna first move forward like this and make sure that I don't hear any rubbing. If you hear any rubbing on the tires or it's really hard to move forward, you might wanna go check out a local bike shop and see if they can fix your calipers. However, if it is rolling back and forth smoothly, then I'm gonna try just pressing the front brake and you'll notice that my back tire comes off. So my front one is working. Next, I'm gonna check my back tire. So I squeeze that one. Notice how it doesn't move in the back, but the front one does. That means it's working. You can check both of them too. Try to move forward. Great, the brakes are working. So that's B. So lastly, in the ABCs of biking is C for the chain. So you really wanna just make sure that the chain is on and working smoothly. So the way to do that is lift up the back of your bike, pedal it a little bit, make sure it's running smoothly. Another good thing to do is what's called the drop test for your chain. So you just want to lift your bike up and drop it and make sure that the chain doesn't fall off. And later on in this video, Pete is going to be going through how to shift and make sure that your chain is well lubed. Thanks Victoria for taking us through those ABCs. We're going to send it over to Pete and he'll give us a little more detail on lubricating your chain, checking your gears and adjusting your seat. Hi, I'm Pete and I'm here to help you get your bike ready for the cycling season. So one of the things we're going to look at today is how to properly lube your chain. Okay, so when you go to lube your chain, you don't need a fancy spike stand or anything. You can just find somewhere safe to lean it like this um, so that you can have free access to pedal it backwards. And then select a lube. I like a Teflon based lube. Um, TriFlow is a great example. You can get that at pretty much any hardware store. Um, just make sure you're not using WD-40, which is a solvent, not a lube. And don't use like 3-in-1 oil or car oil or anything like that because that will collect a lot of dirt and, and then make your, your chain wear out quicker. Okay, so when we apply the lube, 
we're going to pedal backwards and we're going to saturate the chain because when we're lubing the chain we're not just putting lube on it we're actually cleaning the chain we want the whole chain to be damp with lube then you want to pedal it in for a good 30 40 seconds okay after your chain has been uh, thoroughly coated with lube you've pedaled it backwards for a good 30 40 seconds I like to use a sock as a cleaning rag because you can get a good grip around the chain. Pedal backwards, wipe off the excess lube, and as you wipe off the excess lube, you're also taking the dirt with it. And when you're done, you have a nice clean chain. All right, so now we're going to talk about seat height. Uh, seat height's pretty crucial for um, being efficient and comfortable on your bike. So. Uh, the seat height that you're looking for is, again, it being next to a wall is very helpful for something like this. You want to have just short of full leg extension when you're on the bottom. And one way to find that is if you put your heel on the center of the pedal, this pedal, you should be able to have full leg extension without your butt rocking from side to side. That way when your foot is in the proper position with the ball of your foot over the spindle of the pedal, you're just shy of full extension. Alright, so some seats uh, use a quick release clamp here. I have mine set up with a bolt set up. Um, you just want to make sure that you loosen it if you got to adjust your seat height to wherever you need. Make sure it's straight. When you find your proper position, you're going to want to make sure that it is tight enough to be snug and if you what to check as you get it tighter if you can move it a little bit like that then it's not quite tight enough you want to you don't want to over tighten it because you'll snap the bolt but so you just kind of approach it slowly until it's tight enough that it doesn't move thanks Pete and Victoria everybody should have their bikes ready to go now I'm Gavin I'm with the bike coalition talk a little about safety lights are the most important thing really um, you can get a small flashing one for the back, either from us or from uh, the internet, local bike shop. A nice bright front one is a good upgrade. Safety-wise, check out our website, tahoebike.org. We've got a bunch of safety tips in there. Some of the most important things being uh, riding with traffic, announcing yourself when you pass somebody, um, and just being kind while you're out there to every other kind of user. While you're on the Bike Coalition website, you can check out our map. We have an online version that finds the route for you. We also have a paper version that you can find at bike shops and visitor centers all around the lake. You've probably seen it. Uh, the Bike Coalition tries to support biking all over Tahoe in other ways. We install permanent bike racks. We do temporary bike parking for events, our bike valet, and things like the bike challenge to encourage people to, to get out there and bike. Um, we put on the bike challenge with TRPA, as Victoria said at the beginning. So on our website, tahobike.org, you can click the bike challenge link and sign up and you'll be ready to ride in June. Happy biking, see you out there.